Hi, I hope you're having a great day. As you might have guessed by now, this video is a formal response to one of the questions during our very first live stream here on YouTube. You already, you, 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 um, you, you must all, hey, tam, what do you, oh, no one. Welcome back to Nico Venture. Here was Sarah Jane, and her question was Is it required to have Jitsumusha Kenshu before taking the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken? And the answer is Yes, it is. In this video, we're gonna define what is Jitsumusha Kenshu, why is it important, and who is required to have it. So, without further ado, let us begin. If you've been following this channel, you might notice that most of my videos focus on the National Caregiver Certification Exam, or in Japanese, the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken. The Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken is a national examination for all qualified caregivers currently working here in Japan, foreigner or otherwise. As a national examination, there are certain requirements and qualifications an examinee must have. And one of those requirements and qualifications is to complete a Jitsumusha Kenshu. But what in the act fuck is a Jitsumusha Kenshu? Verbatim, Kenshu means training. Jitsumu means practical. In this context, when we say practical, that means actual or hands-on. In other words, Jitsumu Kenshu is actual or hands-on training. A Jitsumusha is simply a person who will do the actual or hands-on training. So, Jitsumusha Kenshu is an actual or hands-on training for certain people. Jitsumusha Kenshu is a general term for a training course that is required for a variety of industries and that includes the caregiving industry. That means certain or some caregivers, foreigner or Japanese, who wants to take the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken and become a Kaigo Fukushishi of Japan must complete a Jitsumusha Kenshu. For formality's sake, the Jitsumusha Kenshu for all caregivers located here in Japan is formally called Kaigo Fukushishi Jitsumusha Kenshu. So I will assume Sarah Jane here is a caregiver here in Japan who wants to take the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken. Again. That means, Sarah Jane, before you take the exam, you must complete a related Jitsumusha Kenshu. That's because a Jitsumusha Kenshu is required before taking the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken. But why is it required? For us to know why Jitsumusha Kenshu is required or important for caregivers who want to take the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken, we need to know the purpose of a Jitsumusha Kenshu. The purpose of a Jitsumusha Kenshu, at least in this context, is that it allows a person to learn about the care process necessary to work as a caregiver here in Japan. Jitsumusha Kenshu also allows you to learn about Ninshisho and develop the skills needed to become a Kaigo Fukushishi. The target people of a Jitsumusha Kenshu, at least in this context, are those persons who have little knowledge and who have little experience about caregiving here in Japan. And that is why a Jitsumusha Kenshu is a requirement before taking the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken because it is virtually impossible to pass the said exam if you have insufficient knowledge and insufficient experience about caregiving here in Japan. And one of the many ways a person can earn caregiving knowledge and caregiving experience is through a Jitsumusha Kenshu. Let's think about it like this. If you want to become a Kaigo Fukushishi here in Japan, you must take and pass the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken. And in order for you to pass the said exam, in order for you to pass the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashiken, you must have enough knowledge and enough experience about caregiving here in Japan. Japan. And ladies and gentlemen, you can only earn caregiving knowledge and experience by working shigoto, by studying benkyo, and by training kenshu, jitsumusha kenshu. Oh, 
However, after all the things I've said and done, doesn't mean that everyone, literally everyone who wants to become a Kaigo Fukushishi here in Japan must complete a Jitsu Musha Kenshu? Fuck no! The answer is no. There are only three types of people who are required to complete a Jitsu Musha Kenshu before taking the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokashiken. And these people are the SSW caregivers, the TITP caregiver trainees, and the unlicensed people or Mushikaku. So, I stand corrected. SSW caregivers or those foreign caregivers under the Tokutegi no Seido are required to complete a Jitsu Musha Kenshu before taking the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokashiken. The same principle applies to those TITP caregiver trainees or those caregiver trainees under the Gino Jishu Seido. Sarah Jane is an SSW caregiver. That means Sarah Jane, you are required to complete a Jitsumusha Kenshu to be eligible in taking the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokashiken. The unlicensed people or the Mushikaku persons are those people who are not SSW caregivers, not TITP caregiver trainees, not EPA caregiver applicants and not a student visa holder. An example of an unlicensed person or a mushikaku is the child of a permanent resident of Japan. If you are a child or you know someone who is a child of a permanent resident here in Japan, that person or that child must take a Jitsu Musha Kenshu if that person or that child wants to become a Kaigo Fuku Shishi. I hope I made myself clear. I was a farmer before as a trainee, then shifted to another category, caregiving. Now I am an SSW caregiver, but my company asks me to take the Shonin Shakenshu and Jitsumu Shakenshu plus three years of caregiving experience in order to take the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokashiken. Thank you so much, the Explorators, for your comment. I really do appreciate your sharing of your experience as a farmer turned caregiver here in Japan. Your experience is simply amazing. Let me go ahead and insert a new topic in this video. So, Shoninsha Kenshu. What the fuck is it? Verbatim, it is another type of training, Kenshu. Shoninsha can be roughly translated to a beginner a newbie, or a neophyte. In this context, Shonin Shakenshu is a type of training for those people who have absolutely zero experience and absolutely zero knowledge about caregiving here in Japan. Shonin Shakenshu and Jitsumu Shakenshu are two very different things. In Shonin Shakenshu, you will learn the most basic skills the most basic knowledge about Japanese caregiving. In Jitsu Musha Kenshu, you will learn specialized skills and knowledge about caregiving here in Japan. Technically speaking, you must first complete a Shonin Kenshu before having a Jitsu Musha Kenshu. But that depends on your company. Some companies or caregiving companies here in Japan might require their caregivers to complete both the Shonin Kenshu and Jitsu Musha Kenshu. However, some companies will only require their caregivers to finish only the Jitsu Musha Kenshu. The decision whether you complete one or both will depend on how your company evaluates your caregiving skills and knowledge in your workplace. One more thing to remember is that even if you only have a Shonin Shakenshu certificate or a Jitsu Musha Kenshu certificate, you can still work as a caregiver here in Japan. As a Shonin Shakenshu certificate holder, you can work here in Japan as a caregiver, but your work may have certain limitations. A Jitsu Musha Kenshu certificate holder has a wider range of tasks and responsibilities when working as a caregiver here in Japan. Again, thank you so much the Explorators for your wonderful comment. So, for an SSW caregiver and a TITP caregiver trainee, you must complete a Jitsu Musha Kenshu and a Shonin Kenshu if your company requires it, plus more than three years of caregiving experience 
here in Japan for you to become eligible in the Kaigo Fukushishi Kokkashigen and have a chance to become a Kaigo Fukushishi. I hope you've learned something from this video and I hope you'll forgive me for not being able to discuss this topic in great detail during our first live stream. I was really nervous at that time that I was not able to gather my thoughts. Also, I was not well versed on the Jitsu Musha Kenshu and Shonin Kenshu at that time until now. Regardless, thank you so much for your time watching this video. If you've learned this video or you enjoyed the presentation, please do leave a like, leave a comment, and share this video with your interested friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for your time again. Thank you so much for your time watching this video. See you in the next one. Babush!